Okay, we're gonna do a little more symbolizing here. Can't get enough of that. We've got three uh, practice problems we can take a look at. Neither Jay nor Stewart is a logician, comma, if R, Rhonda, is a mathematician. I see the comma. That's probably gonna tell me that the main uh, connective is gonna be nearby. It's right near the word if. So I'm thinking this whole thing is one gigantic conditional statement. Now, oftentimes, well, usually the word if is going to be associated with the antecedent. Not always. If I see the words only if, kind of throws things around. Check your materials for that. But when I see this, this is the case if this is. We can't <clears throat> this is actually the antecedent. Conceptually, this is coming first. If this is the case, then neither J nor Stewart is a logician. So we're going to have the R for Rhonda as a mathematician be the antecedent. The consequent that follows from that. Neither Jay nor Stewart is a logician. We have a neither nor. The way I like to think of this is kind of like a negated either or. So the way to translate a neither nor statement is to have a negated either or. Either Jay or Stewart, the whole thing being negated. So if Ron is a math teacher or mathematician, then neither Jay nor Stewart is a logician. Second one. Uh, if it is false that D, comma, then P is a parrot, Polly's a parrot, unless Mandy is not a mouse. Again, we have a single comma. If you have two commas, you have to think more about this, but with a single comma, it's usually pretty straightforward. It's right near the word then, which is telling me the main connective is going to be uh, a horseshoe for if then. Here we have the antecedent to the left. It is false that D. It's false that, uh, it's false that D. So we'll just have that. The consequent is going to be Polly is a parrot unless Mandy is not a mouse. Now, I'd be translating unless with a wedge. It's logic equivalent to or. A unless B is going to be logic equivalent to A or B. So this is going to be one straightforward way of doing this. Polly's a parrot is an affirmative statement. Mandy is not a mouse. We have a negated affirmative statement, a negation. I'll put those in parentheses to have this be the unit, the consequent to that antecedent. It's clear that's the main connective of that statement. Number three, we have something going on that's similar to up here. We have uh, an if statement. I don't see the word then, but Sue swims if Joe dives. That's going to be the same thing as saying if Joe dives, then Sue swims. So we have a conditional. If Joe dives, an affirmative statement, it's implied that Sue swims. Sometimes in English, the if part comes to the, at the end of the sentence, sometimes the beginning. There's just a thousand ways of saying those implications. What we want to do is take a look and see what is conceptually coming first. And the if part here is almost always going to be the antecedent. There's a thousand different uh, ways of looking at this thing. You really just got to take a look at a whole bunch. We have plenty in our materials to take a look at. Uh, this just gives you an idea, a little bit more of an idea as to how to go about doing this.